Alright everybody, hello and welcome as always, I am Sean, this is In The Mixer, episode 115 of our Isle of Man series. Happy Friday, wherever in the world you happen to be watching from, even if you're watching this one on a different day of the week. I hope you've had a wonderful week wherever you are. Now, all throughout this week we have travelled all across the English countryside. We've been down to London, we've been to Manchester, we've had some rural games. Today we head to Yorkshire, we're playing Leeds. In a massive fixture that may potentially see us jump back into a Europa League spot. We're not going to waste too much time. We're going to jump straight back in and let you know how we've gone in the games off screen. So as you guys can see here, left hand. I remember the right one that time. Straight up above us. Sitting in eighth position. One point outside the Europa League places. Leeds on 37 points. One point ahead of us. Liverpool on 38. Two points clear as well. So potentially, if we get some good results in this game, we could jump back into Europa League football, which is absolutely mind-boggling for only our second season in the Premier Division. The other game we'll play is an away trip to Southampton. So it's an away double header down to the south coast after that. You may remember yesterday's episode, I said we will probably come back and do an FA Cup game. We're not going to do an FA Cup game because we got knocked out of the FA Cup. A 1-0 defeat to Nottingham Forest, a fully rotated squad, including a debutant, Mariano Aru, who we picked up from Rosario Central in Argentina. Rosario would be good to us. They gave us Alta Miranda. We're trying to hopefully unearth another young talent. We've gotten to this point of the season without a backup number 10 for Javier Aguaya. So we're bringing him in as a young prospect. He hasn't cost us a tremendous amount either. And at 18 years of age, we'll give him a couple of seasons to uh, continue his development as well. There's a few players that we've signed that aren't going to join until the end of the season because they're around 17 at the moment. We'll go through those guys at the end of the year. Now, the other position that we're also keeping an eye on stuff for is left wing. We haven't really found anyone that's nailed down that spot. Bloor hasn't done too well. Carragher, I think, is just not quite at a Premier Division level yet. He might need a couple more loans before he gets to that stage. So we are keeping an eye on a few guys here. Now, I'll show you guys what I do to kind of scour the transfer market. I'm not particularly worried about where they're playing, how often they're playing, anything like that as things currently stand. But what I do always want to keep an eye on are the key roles and attributes for what we want them to do. So I've set an age limit as at most 18 because I'd like to bring a player in that has two or three years to get to one kid status. And then what I've done is I've set every key role to a winger on attack for at least 12 rating. And what that does is it helps us kind of give a little bit more balance to the player we're looking for and kind of helps us assign high potential players that our scouting network wouldn't necessarily provide. If we look at our staff, you'll see our coaching staff's actually really, really good in comparison with a lot of the other clubs at a Premier Division level, which is fantastic. We've got some goalkeeper coaches that are continuing their development, um, but our scouting isn't that great. Neither is our medical staff, but I don't know how we're supposed to fix that because they've all got 20 physiotherapy. So maybe that's just around the size of the team. I'm not 100% clear on that just yet, but We've got relatively average recruiting team members. Because of that, I just really want to focus on the key roles and key stats within an attribute. So of these stats, I would say like crossing is a more important one. So we might drop that, push that up to 15. You'll see there's no one associated with it. We might push dribbling up to 15 and we might go acceleration and pace to 15 as well. I think they're probably the four key and critical. But what we can do at the same time is drop a lot of these other ones that we had previously listed as 12 down to 10 because double figures would be nice but not necessarily a requirement of what we want to do. Now, there are a few things additionally that we can teach over time. So like stamina is something that I think we can effectively teach over time. We might remove that one from the list, take it down to 10, and you'll see that there's no one populating just yet. Agility would be a good one to have. Work rate, not necessarily required. We do let our wingers kind of stay a little bit further forward. Passing, not super critical. First touch isn't really super critical for me either. In reality, the only additional ones I'd want to look at are like technique, off the ball, agility. We can expand this to 19 years of age and you see that they bring up a player called Nesta Rossi who has crossing, dribbling, acceleration and pace all above 15 and a lot of the other key attributes that we would designate as being critical for that role above 10 as well. So what we're going to do is jump in here and have a look at him. He looks very tidy, already in wonder kid status. He's 19 years of age. He's a left-footed player playing at Napoli. He's made five ten first team appearances in two years. Started his career at San Lorenzo in Argentina, which is weird that he's Italian. I'm guessing he declared for that nation. But what we might do is we're going to first check out his contract. He hasn't got a release clause. He's got a few years left on his deal, but he's not getting paid a tremendous amount of money. So Napoli might actually be open to selling him at the moment. His current value is 13.25 million. I think we can try and probably lowball them beneath that. And maybe as we throw this together, do maybe 10 million up front, 15 million over three years, so three payments of 5 million pound, maybe 20% of his next fee and suggest that. And they've actually responded. So 25 million pound up front and potentially 20% of any future revenue we make on his sale for a wonder kid prospect 
is fantastic. And we know he can do everything that we want him to do as a winger on support. He can potentially also be a winger on attack, it looks like, as well. 17 dribbling jumps out at you immediately. 16 passing is very good. Physical attributes, decent as well. And he's a lefty playing on that side. We're going to throw a bid in. We're going to see how it goes. Throughout the course of this episode, we might check back in and see how that transfer actually goes. A lot of my transfers, I just kind of introduce you to the player once I've got him. I think this is the first time I've really actually kind of taken you through the machinations of identifying a player from around the world and then also trying to bring them in as well through negotiation and whatever else. Okay, so the board are annoyed here. So this is not something that I expected. They feel a deal amounting to 21.5 million pound would be the absolute maximum they could afford although they would still be view that to be on the high side. So they think we're paying too much. I'm going to have a chat with them. Really good prospect, and he'll be okay in the future. They really appreciate the comments, and they are happy to let us proceed with the deal. So, okay, that was a waste of time for no reason. But we've got a match against Leeds we need to focus on. We're going to jump ahead now and have a look at the two lineups. So this is how we're going to line up. It's pretty much a full choice lineup. or A first strength team playing and a full strength lineup. The full choice is not a thing that people say. It's been a long week. It's Friday. Give me a break. But we're going to go with Kubis in goal, Warburton and Escobar as the defensive partnership. Carlos Andre at left back. He makes his return from injury. Cedron, who's moved up to one kid status, playing at right wing back. Lester will anchor midfield alongside Barbosa, who hasn't quite hit the heights he did last year, but is consistently improving as a player. Like, look at some of these north arrows that you can see here on different individual traits. Uh, he is progressing into a tremendous player. I think maybe he want to, wants to play a little bit further ahead, but I'm not going to worry about that now. We're going to keep using him as a Messiah, which he has pretty much all the key traits for. Aguirre at the 10, our highest average rated player for the season. We'll give Elliot Bloor a little bit more time on the left-hand side, but if we bring in Rossi, that may effectively resign Bloor to being like a backup player in the squad. Peacock will play on the right. He's having an excellent year, and Phillips, our leading scorer, leading line up front. Goals have dried up a little bit for Phillips. He did have a knock for a little bit that I think it took him a lot, bit longer to get over, but he was at nine goals within like 10 or 12 games, uh, and really, he hasn't really scored that much in the last 10 games or so. We need him to start hitting the back of the net with some regularity. Looking at Leeds, they're playing a very similar structure, a 4-2-3-1. Of the original player, or sorry, players from the original database, I should say, they've got Benoit Badiashili, 31-year-old French central defender. He's a ball-playing defender. He looks to have relatively good technical attributes. Mental's nothing jumping out at me, but physically just a B. 16 balance, reach, fitness, and pace. 15 for the other attributes as well. Just an absolute tower of man. In midfield, they've got Frankie de Jong, who they've had for a couple of seasons now. Actually, no, I take that back. It's his first season, but he has moved around quite a bit. He was at Barcelona till 2024. He spent seven years at PSG, a season last year at Inter Milan, and now he's been at Leeds, blanking 21 appearances for them this season with one goal. Still got some very good technical attributes, 18 first touch, passing, and 17 technique. Mentally fantastic, 19 composure, 16 concentration, decision-making, determination, flair, teamwork, vision of 17, work rate of 16, just phenomenal, phenomenal mental player. And physically has dropped off quite a bit, but he's 35 years of age. That's to be expected as you get further into these saves. And then the other one they've got is Matthäus Bogus, who interestingly has been at Leeds the entire save. Still four-star current ability, four-star potential. They picked him up from Bristol. Oh no, he might've gone out on loan at Bristol. But over the last 14 years, 374 appearances and 43 goals for Leeds. Still a key part of their side. It's always interesting to see when players stay at a club all the way through a save period. Passionately, we're going to tell everybody we're underdogs here. That suits us down to the ground. I'm also going to assertively tell the defense that I have faith in them, as well as giving Scott Phillips a little bit of a nudge up top as well. And in reality, we just want decent performances. If we can find the back of the net, I back us to do well. But in reality, lately, it's been a bit of a struggle De Jong puts a ball forward here. We've got the orange match ball out there, which makes me think it might be snowy conditions. Leicester has potentially given away a penalty. He has indeed. Nine minutes in, we're going to have to defend from the penalty spot. Kubis has been excellent from these scenarios. Milan takes it, and he's hit the post, and we managed to scramble it away. Warburton really could have turned and cleared that one. No one for Leeds was following it in. We're let off the hook there just a little bit. Antonio to take the corner. And Salico with the header never looked like troubling the goal, really. So we've gotten away with a little warning shot early. We do need to pick up our play here as this continues. Backstick ball towards Batty Ashili. We spoke about him in the build-up. No one got anywhere near him for that header. Thankfully, just over the crossbar. So interestingly, Seth Hampton just jumped above us into eighth position. So two massive fixtures if they hold current place. Young with a flick on header. Kuba saves and holds. Is that the end of the highlight? We can get this ball out to the right-hand side. Peacock's out there in a little bit of space. So we've gone to the left. Elliot Bloor will come forward. Sends Phillips in behind. Can he find the finish? It's straight at Clark in goal. Really, Phillips is excellent out of the air from like headed finishes, but his 1v1s are horrific. Aguirre takes the corner. He goes near post. 
Warburton will recover possession and then does lose it out eventually before Young clears it into touch for Leeds. At least we're having highlights though. At least we've had a shot on targets. Very even stat line for both sides after 30 minutes. Throw in here on the right-hand side. We'll let this play out and then we might use a shout. They've sent the ball into the corner where Bloor will recover. Clearance isn't horrific. It's going to find Peacock on the other side. And he bursts forward, plays Phillips into space. Can he find the finish this time? It's straight at Clark again. We might need to have to look at the uh, transfer market and find a finishing striker because some of our chances are drying up here in the second half of the season. We're going to use that get creative shout, though, with about 10 minutes remaining in the half, see if we can't push everybody or inspire everybody forward to try and find a finish. And nothing doing just yet. The missed penalty, the story of the first half. Leeds had 10 shots, 3 on target, 51% of the ball. For Isle of Man, 7 shots, 2 on target, 49% possession. We are still on our attacking mentality. Passionately, I'm going to say we've been the better team here. Keep doing what you're doing. I'm going to passionately tell the defense. I think there's more to come from them. And we've had a couple of midfielders respond positively to that as well, as we always do, because I'm a creature of habit. We'll give it 15 minutes before we look at subs and changes. Now I've got a throw in here on the right-hand side. Ball back with Cedron now. Exchanges passes with Leicester. Now into Aguilar on the half turn, sends it out left for Bloor. What can he do from the wide area? Cuts it back to Phillips. It's shut down again, and then Bloor recovers possession in the box and finds the finish. Maybe he knows that we've just placed that bit on Rossi. Oh, uh, is this going to get pulled back? It's pulled back for offside. When Phillips hit the initial shot, Bloor would have been in an offside position. That's devastating. Let the highlight play out before you do the fist pump, before you uh, commit. All right, we're through the hour mark now, so we're going to pause, and we're going to have a look at our subs. Leicester hasn't had a great game, uh, which is rare for him. He's been pretty decent so far this season. We might bring on Cambridge to fill in at that deep line playmaker role. Phillips is playing as an advanced forward. I've left that set because Hayes played in the FA Cup game. That's my fault. So we'll switch into a complete forward and hope that helps his match rating. Mariano Oru, they're suggesting, could potentially come on in midfield. Maybe we'll drop Aguirre back and move Oru to be an advanced playmaker a little bit further forward. We might actually do the same for... Aguirre as well. We'll see how that works out. Two advanced playmakers, but in different positions on the pitch. Could be an interesting one. And then we might hold off on that last sub for the last 10 minutes or so. Passionately, I've got faith in you. And let's also use Old Faithful after an hour. I'll get creative shout. I have the feeling watching this game and looking at this stat line, one of the teams is going to break the deadlock. We have got a corner to defend here from the looks of it. We get into our structured shape. Backstick run and it pinballs around. I think that's going to be chalked off for offside as well. Dukic would have been offside when Badia Shile's header came in initially, though that simple tap-in would have been very frustrating. Ten minutes remain, so we're going to jump in and do that last sub. Phillips has not played well. We're going to bring on Johnny Hayes, who still yet to score for the club since joining from Rangers in January. or well, not in January, sorry, in the off-season. We're going to bring him on, play him as an advance forward, give him a bit of praise, and we're also going to use our demand more shout here. Ball into Oru. Now Bloor, who has had a better game, Carlos Andre. Tries to play it, but we lose our possession. Bogos with a reverse pass to Maidana, who's come off the bench four leads. Gets into a decent area. Wide shot, saved by Kubis, and somehow they managed to scramble at home. Bruno Maidana with his seventh goal of the season. What was Warburton doing there? He's the guy that never keeps his calm under pressure. He always just clears it. Why this one situation has he decided to take his sweet-ass time getting it off the line? Hits Warburton, and then everybody just lets... Yeah, that's so frustrating. Maidana was about a yard behind everybody when it hit Warburton. I don't know why they're showing us that. We know it was put home anyway. So, all right, let's also keep an eye on this shout. As soon as we can, we're going to use a get creative shout. Should be able to shortly. There's about a minute remaining of additional time, and it's not worked out for us. If we don't make Europa League, it will be entirely on us. But I know expectations just want a top half finish. We've had, oh sorry, Leeds had a missed penalty and then Maidana's 83rd minute winner, but 19 shots, 9 on target, 49% possession for us. 8 shots, 3 on target, 51% of the ball. I'm going to aggressively say I'm not happy with the result and everyone's responded positively to it, which is good. Morale isn't in a horrific spot. We want to try and keep that as high as we can, but that's a big game for us and Leeds, to be honest, aren't that good aside. It does see them move up into 6th spot. Liverpool drop down to 7th and Southampton now leapfrog us into 8th position which I guess makes our match against them all the bigger. They have just absolutely walloped Newcastle 4-1. Newcastle were in the Champions League spots until very late last season, and this year just really struggling down in 17th place. We are miles clear of the relegation battle, which is fantastic. Phillips has promised to put an end to a growing concern over his lack of goals for the club. He's now played 15 hours of competitive football without finding the net. I wasn't aware of that. Dukic got the Man of the Match award with a 7.1 match rating. 7.1 is very low. I guess that kind of goes to show how poor the game was. Goals, Hayes tries to remain upbeat. He's now played 20 games for us and has yet 
to find the back of the net. We might need to go in and try and find a striker here. But if we want to focus on the positive, we do have Rossi accepting a bid. Let's check out what he wants in terms of play. We're going to try and take this one out, which is a bit of a deal breaker for me. We'll let him use the club as a stepping stone. That's fine. We'll send a player on an intensive language course. That's fine. We don't need to improve the coaching team. Our coaching team is excellent, and we'll look to strengthen midfield. I'm going to try and take those out and see if he's happy with it. He's fine with it, but he does want to be a star player, which makes me think he's going to want a lot of cash. All right, so 50K a week would make him our highest paid player thus far. We might drop that down to 50. We might drop it down to 2 million as a signing on fee, but increase his agent fee to 250K. We'll make his appearance fee 10,000 pound a week. I wish we could go back in time and have a look at like season one when I couldn't get like 100 pound to offer players and now offering 10K a week as a appearance fee. Only sub fee of 5K, yearly wage rise will take out. I'll give him 250 if he scores 10 goals. And I'll give him another 100k if he gets 15 or 20. I think that's fair. Minimum fair release clause 70 million pounds. So we would still make a benefit on that. He's not entirely happy with it. But what we might do is there's an ace up our sleeve, which we will talk about in a moment. We'll reduce back some of these to what we originally offered. And the additional items that I'm going to first add is an international cap bonus and then bonuses for winning the Premier Division, the FA Cup or the Caribbean Cup. So performance-based incentives if we win at different competitions. And if he doesn't go for this, there is what I call the wild card that we can offer. So just some additional performance-based incentives for him and an international cap bonus of 10K as well. Is he happy with that? Okay, so he's come down to 54K a week and 2 million as a release bonus. I'm also going to add on a sell-on fee percentage of 10%. So that's 10% of any future fee that we potentially get for him. So 20, let's say we do sell him for 71 million pound, his minimum fee release clause. We would give him 10% of that. So 7.1 million pound. And we would give 14.2 million pound back to Napoli. So we would still make about 50 million pound profit if someone pays his minimum fee release clause. So let's balance these back out and we'll offer this. And he's happy with that. So he's still going to be amongst our highest earners, probably the highest earner once he actually signs. But at 19 years of age, he can do everything that we need him to on that left-hand side. And we haven't, we've had Benizzi, but we haven't had any Italian wonder kids come through. So it'll be an interesting one for him. We'll see how that plays out. But magic of editing, we're going to jump forward 10 days to the game against Southampton. All right, so not the Southampton game, but we have actually brought in Nesta Rossi. He's going to join for a total of... 25 million pounds plus potential future fee as well 10.5 million to be deducted from our remaining wage budget for the year which i think will finish up basically any transfers that we're going to do for this season we are going to hit accept and you will notice i've gone and put in a wonderful face pack from chill moose gaming the links are in the description below to go and check out her phenomenal work and that looks absolutely magnificent and very italian so potential that we're going to have in this episode not just a player that we've scouted looked for made a bid on done contract negotiations. We might also be about to give him his debut against Southampton as well. So he arrives. We're going to ask Escobar to bring him in just so that he settles as quickly as we can. We are going to add him to our squad registration for the season. And we are also going to assign him a squad number. The next available one, number 23, my favorite number. We'll submit that. And we will also set up his individual training to get him to be an effective influence on the left wing. We might actually set him. He can already do support. So we might set him to attack as he continues to train that. And we'll drop him in the starting lineup as well. We will see how this one goes. This time, Magic Ready, we are going to jump forward to the lineups for the Southampton game. All right, just like that, we are a couple of days further ahead. Of course, the debutante is the main change coming in on that left-hand side. We're going to see how he gets on today. There are a couple of injury concerns. Kubis has a cold. Barbosa has the flu. They both indicated that they were going to be okay to play today. We'll see how they go, but we'll have to keep that an eye on that as the game continues. Southampton, super aggressive formation they're playing here. It's a 4-2-4 effectively with these two wingers bombing on a bit further. They have got Hannibal Meshbury as well, who is a wonderful wonder kid if you can pick him up from United early on in your saves. Full disclosure, I've got him in a network save at the moment at Dundee, and he is absolutely smashing it at that number 10 role. But he looks to have had a decent career. He left Man United to go to Valencia, and then he was at PSG for a little while, Sassuolo... Olympic Lyon and now for two seasons Southampton back in the Premier Division to probably finish off his career now he's 30 years of age. We've got Danny Lodo who's caused us no end of issues over the last couple of seasons. We played him back when he was at Blackburn I think. I think we played him when he was at Norwich and Everton. He scored against us when he was at Chelsea. I definitely remember that and now Southampton this season. He's got a good run of form scoring against us. See how he gets on. Highest average rate of player Gilles or Gilles Hoste, a Belgian 
central midfielder. He looks decent. Only 21 years of age. Five-star potential. Four-and-a-half-star current ability already. Only two appearances for the club. They may have only just recently picked him up, if I'm being honest. £29 million. Pound. It looks like, yeah, they might have just signed him this transfer window from Anderlecht, but he looks to be a very good prospect. We are going to assertively tell the team, recent form standings have us have Southampton in the seventh place. Well, we're 15th. We need to do better. And we're also going to tell our defence. I have faith in you to make a difference. It hasn't worked so far. But potentially, if we get off to a good start here, we can turn around our run of form. Ball out to the left-hand side. Angelini now gets into the box. Someone's got to square it up. Loda with the header. He's, I said it at the start. He's got a habit of scoring against me. I'm hopeful today. We've finally figured out how to mark him. Goal kick here with Southampton. The press will commence pretty quickly. They go long forward into wide areas, and then they've gone over the top to Meshbury, who surely is offside. It's going to get brought back because the linesman hasn't moved. That's my theory in my head. Talking to VAR and they're pulling it back. It looked offside in the build-up, so I'm not sure why they showed us the highlight. Throw in here, right-hand side. They give possession back. It looks like Phillips has gone down with a knock. Leicester in possession. given away in a terrible area. Angelini comes forward. It's a wonderful save from Kubis to keep it in it. All right, we need Phillips to get back up and get out there on the pitch because we are not scoring regularly. He's not either, but at least we'd have someone up top to try and relieve the pressure at the moment. Through 30 minutes without creating a shot on target, we're going to use our Get Creative shout here. Everyone seems inspired, but at the same time, Southampton look focused by whatever shout they have had from their touchline. Throwing here on the left-hand side now for Southampton. Angelini, who's been in a couple of highlights now, picks up the ball on the left-hand side, gets to the byline, looks to cut it back. Escobar with a good header away. It's cleared, and now Phillips comes into play. Barbosa with a good ball over the top for Aguirre. Has he got the pace to get away from the defense? Instead, he tries a ball in behind for the overlapping fullback. Wasn't quite there. Thankfully, the clearance gives us back possession. Barbosa, reverse pass to Phillips. Can he find the finish? Close down by Rossi on his debut. Finds Phillips. Is he onside, though? That's going to be the key here. I think it's going to be pulled back by VAR. It is. He would have been in an offside position when Rossi had the initial shot, but at least we know where the back of the net is. Half time, seven shots, two on target, 42% possession for Southampton. Five shots, two on target, 58% of the ball for us. How do we turn some of this possession into key chances? Passionately, pleased with how things are going. Keep it up. We're going to stay on attacking. Not going to stray too far away from that for the moment. Phillips knock, we'll have to keep an eye on. Phillips, as I say that, not even finishing the sentence. Sports Interactive listening in through the microphone. He now has to come off, so we're going to bring on... Maybe we'll bring on Elliot Bloor. Maybe we'll play him as a forward. He can play as an advanced forward, so... Johnny Hayes still hasn't scored for us. Phillips hasn't scored. Bloor, still a wonder kid. Maybe we try and get him out there to play as an advance forward for a little bit until we reset and find our shape, formation, and form. Nesta Rossi hasn't had the greatest debut. Actually, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's make that one sub, and then let's give it another 10, 15 minutes before we look at further details. Highlight here. Corner to be taken by Southampton with an hour played. Backstick ball towards Mashbury. Does very well to save and hold. Now, if we get this forward quickly on the right-hand side, we might potentially get goal side. Aguirre turns and runs. Can he find the layoff here? Said he goes himself from the edge of the air. It wasn't a horrific effort, to be honest. But we're going to make some subs really quickly. We're not going to look at analysis. That's not what we want. So match ratings, both the wingers are struggling, which makes it very difficult. Peacock at least looks motivated. Rossi is on debut, so I'm not going to try and pile on too much of him. We'll bring on Jimmy Winter, move him to be an inverted winger, which is his preferred role. And do I want to risk it by using the last sub? That's really the question. I'm not going to. I know better. Assertively, I have faith in you. As soon as we made that third sub, like someone's going to immediately get injured or get sent off. Going to use our Get Creative shout again. Probably the last time this match. We used a demand more in the last 10 minutes or so, but if we can, we really just need one opportunity. One chance. m and Alright, we're into the last 10 minutes now. Let's make that last sub. Peacock has struggled as well. What are we going to do with these subs? Alright, we're going to re-alter the back one here. So, Bloor will play over on the left-hand side. Winter moves to the right. Let's set them both to attack a little bit more. And Hayes will come on up top still to try and break his duck. To be fair to him, most of his appearances have been off the bench. But in reality, like if you've got a striker who can't score goals and we don't win games when he plays, it's not great. Danny Lode has gotten goal side and absolutely rife with that one at Kubis. He did very well to actually do a push that out for the corner. For right, a take and the highlight comes to an end. All right, let's use our Get Creative shout one last time. One last roll of the dice here in the last 10 minutes. Five additional minutes to be added on for the injury. We're through that time now, and I think it's going to be a boring nil all draw. It is. In the end, Southampton, 14 shots, 6 on target, 49% possession. For us, 12 shots, 6 on target, 51%. I'm not saying the wheels are coming off, but they're definitely wobbling in a weird way. Passionately, well done, lads. You've proved a lot of people wrong in avoiding defeat, I guess. Are we the sort of side that celebrates draws? I don't really think so. 
So we stay in ninth position. We are still three points clear of Brighton in 10th. Top 10, I think, is still what we're trying to strive for. But when you're so close to Europe, it's uh, difficult to try and turn off the desire to go and get that spot. 23 games played, 10 wins, 7 draws, and 6 defeats in that time. Plus 2 goal difference, 37 points. We are well and truly clear of relegation. That's definitely not going to be a battle. We're currently four points clear of the bottom half of the table but we really do need to uh try and put a good run of results together and get some points otherwise we're going to be in some trouble phillips is out for a couple of days rossi makes his debut which is a nice interesting one and phillips remains upbeat i'm starting to get frustrated with you mate so maybe focus on finding the back of the net that would be great as we look forward in our schedule we didn't have the greatest january of all time but we might have an opportunity to beat second place arsenal before the season's out. I think what we'll do is jump forward two games and maybe come back and do the matches against Newcastle and Burnley. Uh, Newcastle, of course, a big one because Ultima Miranda is playing there and they're down towards the relegation spots. We've got a really tough run of fixtures, both Arsenal, Liverpool, and then Chelsea away. It might end up being that when we come back next week that that Newcastle match, that Burnley game, are like key and critical for us to actually get six points for the first time in a while. So we might come back and do those. As always, guys, thank you for the continued support on the channel. I do appreciate every single minute that everybody watches. It does mean a tremendous amount to me. If you want to go that extra mile, drop a like on this video. It helps please that YouTube algorithm, get us higher in search results when people look for FM content. Or you can subscribe to the channel if you want to be kept up to date on all of our future videos. But like I said at the start, more than anything, I just appreciate you watching. I've been Sean, and I'll see you all again in the mixer.